This webcam absolutely blew my mind. It's 4K on a three axis gimbal. And not only that, but it's about a quarter of the size of the webcam I've been recommending to people for the past year. So let's talk about it. Now for full transparency, this is not a paid sponsorship. However, Insta360 did send me this webcam for free to review and all of these opinions are completely my own. So let's switch over to the webcam and see how it looks compared to my DSLR. And this is the Insta360 link. Now, first off, when I look at this picture, I was completely blown away. I thought that it was more likely that it was using the wrong camera source than this being the webcam that I just plugged in. And that was when it was on 1080p. Then I switched to 4K and it looked even better. Like. I was just so, so impressed with the image quality on this thing. So right out of the box, it comes with the webcam itself. It also comes with a USB to USB plug. It also comes with a USB-C to USB adapter, so you can plug it right in if you don't have the USB-C. And this webcam comes with so many cool features. As you'll notice, it is tracking me as I'm moving around, and that is because of the three axis gimbal it has to be able to capture all of my movements and you can even change the speed to how fast it tracks you so if you're just not going to be moving around a ton right now i have it on the lowest setting but if you want to change it to make it a little bit faster you can have it do that as well and not only can this webcam track you but you can also zoom in and out without having to touch the software all you need to do is hold up an l near your face once it recognizes it it'll blink blue and you can zoom in by holding up and now you're zoomed in and if you need to zoom out all you need to do is hold up the l again it'll blink again and you bring it down and it'll just start zooming out and since the webcam is 4K, it's not going to look very grainy, even if you're really far away. So I'll show you, I'll zoom in and then keep moving back and back and back. And as you can see, it still looks pretty good and I'm all the way back here. But if you need to reset the position and the zoom, all you need to do is go over to the webcam itself, double tap on it. And just like that, you will then reset the position. And if I want to have it start tracking again, I just hold up my palm just like this and it'll start tracking me. The webcam also faces down when it's not in use to protect your privacy, which is really nice because I know a lot of people have concerns over the privacy of their webcams. So even if there was a hacker that hacked in, you'd be able to see if it was being used because they would be pointed at you rather than straight down. So that's actually a really cool safety feature. It also features a dual noise canceling microphone. Right now I'm still recording with my SM7B, uh, but I'm going to switch over to that. This is a quick test of the Insta360 microphone. Obviously, it's not going to compare to a dedicated mic, but should be good enough for something like a Zoom meeting. I'm not in love with how it sounds. It's not like the best, but keep in mind it is a webcam. But I definitely recommend pairing this with a nice microphone. So now let's switch over to the webcam comparison so you can see this compared to two other webcams and my DSLR. So here are all four webcams at the same time. Uh, of course, I think the Canon looks the best but that's not really a fair comparison, but it's just really so you can compare them to what it can look like in theory. I love the look of the Insta360 Link. It looks honestly so much closer like to the Canon than it does the other two webcams in my opinion. As you can tell, I'm just like darting back and forth between them all. Just gonna say like right now, the Logitech Brio, it just looks very muted. There's not much life going on. You can't see much detail. Uh, and then the face cam even more so. There's such little detail on my face. It's all just like one color. And this is with kind of the auto settings on. I made a whole video on the face cam, how you can make it look a lot better without the auto settings. But I think the auto settings on the Insta360 look just so much better. Now we're also going to go with low light right here. So this is with the max lighting and this is with low lighting. As you can see, the Canon takes a while to adjust. I honestly think it looks a little bit better than my Canon does right now in this low light. Honestly, can't even really tell that there is less lighting, but I honestly think the Insta360 looks better in low light. Not to say the face cam is that bad, but also you can tell like in the background, the lighting back there, like the LED lights are really messing with the face cam in the bottom right where it's not affecting the other ones as much. It's really trying to adjust to that backlighting, which I think can kind of mess it up. But I really think the Insta360's picture quality is closer to that of a DSLR or mirrorless camera than it is to these high-end webcams, which are starting to look like not very high-end. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of their software. Uh, first, you have the gimbal controls, which you can then move around once the tracking is off. So I had the tracking on, so I wasn't able to move it. But once it's off, I can go left and right a little bit. 
You can also just kind of manually press. You can also zoom in and out with the scroll wheel, which is kind of nice, um, and drag on the screen itself, whichever way you want to go. You also have some lock positions. So for example, if you want to be over here, boom, position one, and then over here for position two, just like that. You can automatically move it back and forth onto the image settings. So I made a whole video for the Elgato cam link where I talked about how to change the settings to make them look really good. For this webcam, it looks great out of the box. Like I tried to make it better by changing up settings, but there was really nothing that I could do that made it look any better. So yes, you can turn off the exposure and then like kind of brighten up with the higher ISO and lower shutter speed if you want. And you also have the auto white balance, which computers are really good at figuring out. I've had no problem with the white balance. Try changing it up. It still looked good. You can maybe turn up the saturation a little bit to make it look a little more, I don't know, Instagram filtery if you want. And you can, of course, turn it down if you want a fun black and white, I don't know, sadness type thing. But no matter how much I played around with it, whenever I reset it, I always thought that picture looked better than whatever I made. Uh, for the more settings, I talked about them a little bit earlier for the gesture settings, which you can turn off individually, which is really nice. But you have the palm for the auto tracking. So you can just boop. Now we're not tracking anymore. You can turn it back on with your palm the L for the zoom, which you can go up and down to zoom in and out. And then the whiteboard mode, which I hadn't talked about, but basically they give you these little stickers that you put on a whiteboard. So you put them on each of the corners of the whiteboard. And then what you can do is when you hold out the whiteboard, it'll then go to the whiteboard and have that be basically full screen. I didn't have a whiteboard. I looked around. I couldn't really do it to test it out. But from what I've seen, it works pretty well. You can change the tracking speed. I like the slow tracking speed because I'm not moving around a ton. But maybe if you're moving around a little bit more, you want the normal speed. And of course, there is a fast speed. But it does a really good job of tracking you. Uh, I like the slow. I think that's since I'm not going to be moving around a lot, you know, can just kind of slowly drift to wherever I'm at. And then like the double tap where it resets the position, you can also single tap to turn on or off the tracking and you can enable or disable all these settings. Um, and then you also have the manual focus versus autofocus. Um, so yeah, it's going to be very blurry. But if we get to the picture we like, then I'm always going to be looking good in this position. And you can see if I turn it all the way up, the back will be super in focus, but I'll be out of focus. Really, you can just keep the autofocus on. And you also have this streamer mode. This basically allows it to be read by external software. So for example, if you're using OBS and you want to stream it through there, once you enable it, you can do a couple cool things. So first off, you can do 50 or 60 FPS, but you can also enable portrait mode, which basically takes it from the widescreen and then flips it 90 degrees. This is super useful if you're doing something like YouTube shorts or filming for TikTok. And it's also going to be a lot higher quality since you're not cropping out the sides. It's going to be the original resolution. So now we're going to take a quick look at the desk view mode and the overhead mode. So my setup isn't really made for this, but the desk view mode basically takes the camera that's looking straight ahead and then looks down sort of at a 45 degree angle. It also flips the image around to make it readable from your point of view. So for example, I've got this set of cards right here. So let's say I was doing like a Pokemon card opening. You could do it right here and the viewers would see what you are viewing which is something that's really cool I never even really thought about. And it also distorts it to make it a look a little bit more normal. Uh, I feel like the closer you have it to the ground, the weirder it's going to look. I have it on a small little tripod that they sent me. It's obviously not going to be a perfect picture because it kind of has to distort it as it goes down, but it's still pretty neat. We also have the overhead mode, which is something that's pretty cool. You can't use this when it's perched up on your monitor or your laptop, but basically when you have it on a tripod or something like this that goes out sideways, it'll look straight down instead. So as you can see, it's now looking straight down, which is actually a really cool feature. And you can then do stuff completely overhead rather than having the distorted image from the desk view mode. So is this camera worth the money? Now off the bat, I thought there was no way it was going to live up to a $300 webcam. Like in my mind, you might as well get like a three or $400 camera and then connect that to your computer. However, this picture looks almost as good as a camera of that price while also having the versatility of being a webcam. It also has all the software and tracking features that you don't have, of course, on a normal camera either. But how does it compare to something like the Elgato face cam, which I recommended to people earlier, which was about like $150, $200 webcam? Uh, it blows it out of the water. It's honestly so much better. Uh, has way more features, looks a lot better. However, in the making of this, Elgato released a brand new webcam. So Elgato, if you're watching, hit me up. So the question I love asking my videos is, who is this camera for? Like what type of person should buy this over a different option? First off, I think this would be a super valuable tool for any type of educator, 
you know, someone who has a whiteboard uh, or if you're doing one-on-one -on -one teaching or if you're making like tutorial videos where you need to write stuff down, this seems like an incredible tool. And of course, companies where you want a webcam with the best picture possible, maybe you're doing a presentation and moving around a little bit, this seems to be the best webcam. Of course, if budget isn't a huge issue, then of course you want to get what's best. And in my opinion, this is the best webcam for that type of stuff. This is also great for the sort of the non-tech savvy person who doesn't want to have to learn how to configure a camera to their computer. And of course, any streamer looking to upgrade their webcam, this of course is a great option. Of course, people who make YouTube shorts and TikToks, this would be great for if you don't want to have to use your phone for everything. Now, I believe in my face cam video, I said that this would be an okay alternative for recording YouTube videos. However, I can confidently say that the Insta360 link is a great alternative for making YouTube videos compared to an expensive camera or using the camera on your phone. Because the problem with recording videos on your camera or on your phone is that you then have to transfer everything over. So this is a great way of being able to record videos that look good, definitely good enough for YouTube where people won't be questioning the quality. And it's great because you then don't have to worry about transferring it from your phone to your computer or from your camera to a computer or have to worry about using a cam link or something in between like it's just a great way to very easily record and then upload so thank you guys so much for watching let me know in the comments if you think it's worth the 300 price tag obviously it's expensive but in my opinion it outclasses everything else like it in the market having its own little niche spot there at the time of uploading this we're also running a promotion for black friday so check out the description for more details about that if you have any questions let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future I'll see you guys next time. Peace.